Hey everyone, uh, thank you so much for joining us today. This is Jeff and Irick with practiceinterviews.com. And yes, we do have that service on our platform. Today, what we wanna focus on is one of the trickier types of questions, which are the open-ended GCA questions at Google. And with so many people working and attacking and, and going after roles in the GCP space, we wanted to focus on a very common question that's being asked across the board. We are going to high level this question and then we're gonna problem solve, talk a little bit about the importance of transitions, the importance of the solution, and I'm gonna let Eric throw some random questions at me as well. If you like our content, please like. If you have any comments, please comment below. If you like our overall content, please subscribe. So I'm going to kick it over to Eric to, to dive into our interview question for the day. Yeah, so um, can you explain GCP to someone that doesn't know a lot about the cloud? Okay, Eric, great question. Um, you know, the first foundational question I just want to understand is, can you tell me, have I ever spoken to this person, yes or no? Um, let's just assume that we don't know. Okay, we don't know. So. I have a few other questions. Um, I really need to understand my audience. So one of the first things I'd be trying to understand is, are they sitting in a technical role or a non-technical role? I'd really want to know from an organizational standpoint, like where are they at in their cloud journey? Are they currently utilizing GCP, AWS, Azure, or are they completely on-prem? And then the last piece that I think would just be helpful would be to understand, hey, are they, are they in like a regulated or non-regulated environment? Can you clarify or answer any of those questions for me? Yeah, so um, I'm just gonna toss it back to you and let you take the lead on that. Okay, okay so really high level, Eric, there's, probably three things that we really need to talk about. Anybody who doesn't know a lot about the cloud, and if we're really casting a wide net to start, we're really talking about how easy it is to use, so ease of use, cost, and how secure it is. Now, there are lots of other items I love to talk about, scalability, reliability, flexibility, automation, those sorts of items, but if we go back to those basic three, ease of use, cost, security, is there one of those three that you might want me to focus on? Yeah, um, if you could focus on ease of use, that would be great. Okay, so based on the fact that I'm working with like no data, uh, let's talk through a few specific items. So I wanna assume this person really is new to me and also new to their cloud journey. And just because it's a very, very common market for retail companies to be adopting the cloud massively right now, let's focus on more of a retail client. And so foundationally, we're talking about ease of use. We really, really want to start with ease of use of understanding how they're utilizing technology, because that's, that's our baseline. Now, they might not know a lot. They might be a CEO, CFO. But if I can understand a little bit about the technology setup, that's really going to help. And then I'm going to start to explain the cloud to them by focusing on a specific technology that I think might interest them. So in this case, let's talk about BigQuery. From an ease of use perspective, there's a few things that they're really going to care about. It's scalable, it's flexible, and it is cost effective. So we'll always kind of get back to that cost piece. So really why? Would they want to know this if they don't know a lot about cloud? Well, it's going to make their business as a retail company more predictable. It's going to help them share critical analytics across the organization. And it's going to have that cool machine learning and automation capability, which what's the visual here? Well, maybe this is an inventory issue that they need help with. Maybe it's we want to identify somebody who buys a certain kind of t-shirt. Can we group and match those t-shirts together? Really, really high level, but I want to pause here. This is just one type of technology on the GCP platform that can help our audience understand a little bit more about how easy it is to use and why it's important. Any of those areas like machine learning that I can focus on a little bit more, we can focus on predictability. Let me just pause there and see where you want to head next. 
Awesome. So, I mean, that's good for the, the Q and A. Could you go ahead and like walk us through kind of how we, um, you know, went through that because there's a lot of transitions there and you know, with the clients that you're working with, it's the transitions are key to these open-ended questions. Okay. So I agree. One of the biggest things that I talk about with my clients is <clears throat> how do we go from clarifying to framework to solution? So you noticed I did a couple things on the clarifying side, right? Very simply, I asked that initial question and paused. Like I really want to understand the foundation of my relationship. So that's a great question. I paused. The other questions you can see, I was quick to group them together because I don't want to ask a ton of questions of my interviewer. Remember, we're thinking reptilian brain, crack brain. We want to present really simple concepts it's that fight or flight. We don't want them running for the hills. So we're doing either or, or yes or no questions. And the more we group them, the easier it is for them to hang out with us. So at the end, what I did was I paused and I really gave Eirik the space to determine whether he wanted to answer any of those questions. I didn't move on too quickly. And then you gave me kind of the prompt, Eirik, to say, hey, like, okay, where should we go next? whether you get that prompt or not this is when we tackle those high level items and we're just going to keep it super high level you saw i bounced around a little bit but i still stayed in like that 30 second time frame like i didn't want to talk for too long i reiterated those three items a couple of times and i mentioned some other things that i thought might be important but then again i paused and i threw it back to iric to allow iric to pick and at that point iric was like oh yeah like Let's focus on ease of use because it is an interesting thing and CFOs care about it, CEOs and CTOs slash CIOs, they all care about it. And I'm just casting a wide net with the C level. The transition into the solution, this is where we bring in our assumptions because IRIC has given us a data point to build off of. If we brought in the assumptions earlier, we would have maybe made an, an assumption that we didn't need to make we want to bring Eric into the conversation as much as possible to help him help us build out our assumptions. So I made a couple and then I got very GCP specific. Why? Because this is a question that is coming up across the board to GCP candidates, program managers, architects, sales engineers, customer engineers, business analysts. Across the board, this question is being asked. And in the solution, I just wanted to pick one GCP technology to focus in on because it's really critical that they understand you explaining something as it correlates back to the business, back to the role, back to the world that you're dealing in. But then my solution, I don't know, we didn't time it, but I, Rick, I would say probably under two minutes, right? And exactly. so at that under two minute category, that's when I check in and we talked about BigQuery. Maybe we talk about Kubernetes next. Maybe we get into AutoML. Maybe we bounce around, but I'm explaining cloud to somebody and talking about GCP technologies. Those kinds of transitions are going to make it incredibly collaborative and have your interviewer envisioning you like working internally and of course externally as well. And then can you walk through like the GCA interview, you know, after this point, you've, you've answered the question, what, what happens after that? Because this is kind of the start. Yeah, so this is the start. So remember the visual is, is that they are going to have the questions already pre-planned. So they're going to look at the question. It's going to be like follow-up question, follow-up question, follow-up question. Now they can go off those pre-planned questions or they can pick their own. And I can tell you, like for me, I always picked my own based on what the candidate said. But the goal here is to keep you talking, keep you going. So I probably would have you tackle another technology or maybe get a little bit more into the benefit of security, especially for a retail company, for example, that really wants to protect their users, protect credit card information, protect all that good information that you know these companies are really gonna care about. All companies are gonna care about protecting users' information. But that's, that's kind of the path that would be that continuation, but you've already set the stage and set the tone to say, I'm gonna stay organized, I'm gonna stay on point, 
and we're going to have this really, really good back and forth dialogue conversation. Mm -hmm. And the total answer is something like three to three and a half minutes about? Your initial answer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so remember, in a GCA interview, the likely total length of your answer is going to be 20 minutes, maybe. So 15 to 20 minutes. So remember, there's a lot of back and forth, but now you've got your interviewer thinking, you're building in space for them, et cetera. So it, it's really going to help the dialogue and get them seeing that you are going to stay on point because not going off on long tangents is part of the power of having success in these interviews. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense. And if you're looking at your response, what, what would be one thing that you think would be most helpful to um, your clients and you know, new clients or the audience here too, for them to just know and keep in mind? Yeah, it's, it's to, you see what I did in the solution. It's like, whoa, how do we go from ease of use into talking about BigQuery? Well, let's, let's present the alternative. Let's say you keep it super high level. You're not going to be memorable. I'm going to hire the person who dove right into BigQuery and took, took a calculated risk, but assumed that I could explain cloud by picking out a specific technology and the benefit of it other than saying, oh, well, Google has great infrastructure and they foundationally have that infrastructure and all security is, in, it's encrypted when you get it. And it's like, be different. Say something different than your competitors. I say this to every one of my clients. How do I know that your competitors are keeping it super high level and not getting into the weeds? I talk to your competitors every single day and none of them do it the first time around. I have to coach them, talk them through it. Even if they've watched my videos, like you just got to dive deep. And that's my biggest suggestion. And then of course, the transitions. Think about it like you're talking to an internal customer, an external customer. We do not just talk at people. We build in space, we build in that back and forth. And that, those two data points, I think are just going to be really, really helpful in this short example for people to have success. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense too. So um, that solution, it's diving into the role and getting specific. I think the one story that you told that was really visual is just imagining your interviewer rushing through these interviews and then three days later writing the write-up. So it's like, who are you going to remember? Is it the generic answer um, or is it the person who went really specific into the role? Um, so with, with that, is there, is there last points that we should add to this? Um, I mean, other than everyone here watching this should jump to our site to download our course. If it's not on the website now, enter in a chat saying, I want the free course. Um, and it's only going to be, we, we don't know. It, it will be free, right? Like, yeah, I think we're going to keep it free. Yeah. We're going to have a free course. That's going to give a better visual of like how to outline this, but yeah, I think for me, I just want to touch on what Eric just said. Your interviewer is not going to type up their notes and make them all clean and nice right after. They're going to step away for a day or two or sometimes three days or over a weekend. So I'm going to retype up my notes. Am I going to hire the person who talked about security at a high level or talked about fluffy item A or fluffy item B? Or am I going to talk to the, am I going to hire the person who dove deep into BigQuery? Yeah, that's more exciting. It's more interesting. It's more connected. And it makes you more memorable when I think about you versus the competition. Awesome. So I think that that concludes this. Um, a lot of context. And then the real question is, you know, to the audience too, should we focus on specific roles for the GCA questions and so forth? Um, and we can, we can see what the comments say. Yeah, just let us know, like, this is, this casts a very, very wide net. This question is asked across the board. This could be an RRK question or a GCA question, but there's a lot of potential to really dive deep, and that's why we kind of focused more on the GCA component today. Um, please let us know in the comments what you're thinking. We're trying to, I'm trying to make more collaborative videos, more interactive videos. Instead of just talking at you, I want to do a mix. We're going to do more lives. We're going to keep everything going. Um, we are adding a ton of tools to practiceinterviews.com. So 
check that out as well. And, and thank you, Ira, for taking the time. And thank you, everybody, for checking out the video. Awesome. Yeah, definitely.